So in this video, we're gonna try to figure out what the name of this thing is. So this is a really famous rifle here. Rifle that you saw in World War II and Korea. It's real famous, but there is a bit of argument over exactly what its name is and how to pronounce that name. Well, let's go ahead and start and look right here and see what it's named. U.S. Rifle Caliber 30 M1. So there you go, U.S. Rifle Caliber 30 M1. We're done. Okay, yes it is the M1 rifle, but that's not what actually anybody ever called it. It had a different name because there are in fact a lot of M1s. Aside from the M1 rifle, you have the M1 carbine, the M1 flamethrower. So as you see, there are a lot of things that got the M1 designation by just being the first thing in whatever type of thing they were. So what is the name that everybody called this by? Well, it's that name. So how do you say that name? Well, that's a bit more complicated. You have the first pronunciation, Garand, which has the R in the second syllable, rhyming with the word and, Garand. And then you have Garand, where the R kind of rolled into the middle or the first syllable there kind of rhymes with the word Arand, Garand, Garand. Which one is right? And where did this name come from? Well, the name actually came from the inventor of this rifle, John Garand, or John Garand. Let's just call him John for the moment. Now, John was actually originally French-Canadian. He came from a family that had a bunch of kids. There were like six brothers in there, and all of them had the first name Saint Jean le Baptiste, which I'm sure I am completely butchering that French. Most of the brothers went by their middle names, but he actually went by his first name, picking up Jean. So he was actually Jean and not John originally. John was just an Americanization of his name. So not only can we not get his last name right, we can't even really get his first name right either. So Jean or John, he went into the United States, got into work there, was working with some tooling companies. So in 1917, he starts working for the War Department on designing rifles, which we now call the Defense Department because Secretary of Defense sounds a little bit better than Secretary of War. And they tasked him to design a fully automatic rifle for them. Now, you're all going to be like, wait a minute, Jeremy, this thing is not fully automatic. And no, it's not. That full auto rifle that he designed didn't end up going anywhere because the war ended by the time that he got it going. Now, in 1920, he becomes a naturalized citizen, but they tasked him on a different job, which was designing an auto loading rifle to be used as a frontline infantry weapon. Well, this is where this M1 comes from. It took about 15 years of working on it, but they finally get it designed. It goes through all the testing, beats out the Pedersen rifle. It becomes the rifle to be used. And as it went out, it started picking up the name of its creator and everybody saw this word and they decided that that word should be pronounced Garand and they called it the M1 Garand. So if everybody in the military called it Garand, where did Garand come from? Well, the Garand pronunciation actually comes from John himself because as far as we can tell, Garand is how he actually pronounced his name. So according to General Hatcher, who was a friend of John's, who in his book from 1948, The Book of the Garand, says that it was pronounced with G as in go and the stress on the first syllable to rhyme with parent, except the final sound is D instead of T. So going off of General Hatcher's pronunciation, John pronounced his name Garand. So now we're in the spot where the rifle is really called by everybody the Garand, but John actually pronounced his name Garand. So which one of these is actually going to be the proper way to refer to the rifle? Well, I'm going to go to somewhere outside of firearms to get us an answer here, 
and to find a similar case from somewhere else. And that similar case is from NASA. Now, I am a big space nerd. I love things about space exploration. I just love all the history behind it and everything as evidenced by this Lego Saturn V that I have purchased and put together. So yeah, I'm pretty much a space nerd. So what does this NASA story here have to do with this here? Well, this, the Saturn V, is from NASA's Project Apollo. This was the missions that took people to the moon. Apollo 11 getting to the moon, all the other Apollo missions, aside from 13, which had some problems, got to the moon. Now, before going to the moon, they had smaller projects. This is one that had three people. The first set of missions were Project Mercury, which was just an individual person that went up. The second one was one that had two people in it. They picked the name off of the constellation in the zodiac, Gemini, because it had two people, and Gemini is twins, and so that worked really well. So Gemini was like a really great name for this, except that no one at NASA called it Gemini. Now, it's supposed to be pronounced Gemini, like rhyming with your eye, but everybody started calling it Gemini, like ending with the joint in your leg, your knee, or sounding like Gemini Cricket. Everybody was calling it Gemini. The astronauts called it Gemini. The designers and developers on everything called it Gemini. The administration called it Gemini. When the contractors that worked on the parts for it referred to it, they referred to it as Gemini. The media started referring to it as Gemini. You can look at big stacks of NASA films going over that project, and it is all overwhelmingly pronounced Gemini, which gave modern historians a little bit of trouble figuring out what to call it because it was obviously supposed to be named after Gemini, and that would be what it would logically seem to be named after, but everybody called it Gemini, and the accepted pronunciation of it now would be Project Gemini. And so I think we have the same thing going on with this rifle that we had going on with Project Gemini. Basically, the original origin of the name is not what everybody ended up pronouncing the name as. Everybody called this rifle the Garand. That was overwhelmingly the pronunciation of it there. And really, everybody today is still using mostly the name Garand for it because that's what everyone that actually used it during World War II in Korea actually called the thing. So I would argue when talking about the man, you would say John Garand because Garand is clearly how he pronounced his name. And when referring to the rifle, we call it the Garand because that is what everyone called it. Now you could call it whatever you want to. Um, you can call it Garand if it makes you happy, but everyone's gonna look at you funny, so probably just stick with Garand. So if you found this video useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and a like you can also leave a comment and let me know what you thought about it. And you can also subscribe to my channel to make sure that you don't miss any of the videos that I post and that you'll catch everything. I'm Jeremy with Poindexter G. And we'll see you next time.